Hello folks, welcome back up to the channel. I got today what I hope is going to be the final episode in this alternator issue that I've been having. If you remember or you look back a few episodes, I replaced the alternator on this old tractor. The, uh, the original alternator was, well, it wasn't hooked up for one. The fan belt was just so loose it was slipping, but two, uh, it was partially seized, so it sounded like it needed new bearings. So I thought, ah, I'll just replace the alternator because they're not that expensive. So I did that, and then I found out that I was going to have trouble fitting the alternator and getting it to swing up in tension properly. So I had to have a buddy down the street make some alterations to the bracket that it is mounted on. Uh, finally got all that working, got it together, and I thought the alternator was working it turns out it really wasn't. So when I first tried it, I was getting 12.3 volts at the back of the alternator. And I thought, that doesn't seem like enough. But I thought, you know, maybe maybe it is. You know, it's better than it was. But of course, it was also a new battery. So then a bunch of people put in the comments, no, it's not charging, it's not charging. And I thought, hmm, it doesn't seem like it's charging. But I'll let it slide for a bit and see if it goes because some people say well it only charges when it has to like no they're supposed to charge all the time so a couple weeks goes by I'm out blowing snow one night and my lights are getting dimmer and dimmer and dimmer and I'm like yeah this thing's not charging I checked the voltage then and it's like 9.4 volts so I'm like well what do I do so I, I watched a bunch of videos oh I watched a ton of videos how to flash an alternator, how to, how to excite an alternator, how to self-excite a self-exciting alternator. And the steps were pretty simple. This is just a single wire alternator, uh, an old Delco Remy remake, remodel, whatever. Um, one wire coming out of the back that goes to the battery. It's not that complicated. So the videos I was watching basically said just touch a terminal onto the R terminal on the alternator, which is for the residual field, and take the other end of your lead and put it onto the battery terminal. You should get a little spark. That should flash the field. Did that. It didn't work. Um, other people said, oh, you got to get it up over 1500 RPM. Did that. People said, no, you got to get it up over 2000 RPM. And then we got into these discussions about the difference between crankshaft RPM and alternator pulley RPM. Um, I revved it as high as it would go and I did not get this thing to charge. And I was just about ready to take it back to the store. Uh, when I got talking to a friend of mine and he said, do you ever get that alternator working? And I thought, this is good time. I said, no, no, I didn't. Uh, he said, because I know this guy and, uh, you know, this guy, he used to work in alternators and he was like the go-to guy in Southern Ontario. If somebody had an issue with their alternator, if, if a mechanic shop had an issue with an alternator that they couldn't fix, they went to this guy. So I said, oh, that's interesting. He said, if you want, I can get him to call you. So, uh, yeah, the guy called me. And he walked me through some stuff and he said, well, this is what you need to do. And, and this guy, I knew he knew his stuff because I tell him what make and model his tractor is. He said, oh, that'll have this alternator. He gives me a part number. He says it'll have this starter on it, gives me the part number. I'm like, wow, this guy sounds like he knows his stuff. So he told me what I need to do. I'm going to show you that right now. And then we're going to see if this works. So stay tuned. This is getting exciting. Okay, so what we got here um, on the single wire alternator is we got the battery terminal and then back down in here, and you can't really see it too good, but there's uh, a terminal block with just two terminals on it. One's the F terminal, the fuel terminal, and the other one's the R terminal, which is the relay terminal. So what we have to do is take a jumper. And what I mean by a jumper is just, you know, like a little pigtail that we'll make with uh, one of these connectors on it. And we're gonna plug that in to the F terminal down here. And then we're gonna bolt it on to the battery terminal. And that's permanent. And once we do that, uh, with the engine running, I've got another jumper that I just made up here. We're gonna plug that in to the R terminal. And then we're just gonna touch it onto this terminal. It may or may not make a little bit of a spark. And in theory, that is supposed to flash the field. Now we're gonna be doing this with the engine running. Uh, so be careful, you don't want to get something caught in here, and that could be very disastrous.
All right, let's see. Hopefully we got enough uh, juice in the battery to start this thing up. Uh, this is a cold start too. All right, fuel on, check. Clutch in, check. Key on. Glow plugs, two 1,000, three 1,000, four 1,000, five 1,000, six 1,000, seven 1,000, eight 1,000. Fire in the hole. Touch this on here. Being very careful not to get my fingers caught. That is so incredible. It worked. I am, I'm so happy that this thing is finally charging after half a winter of trying to figure out how to get it to charge. It is charging. If you saw it on the voltmeter a couple seconds ago, 14.57 uh, volts. That is awesome. Guys, thank you. Thank you so much. Guess that means I can put the hood back on now. Turn the hole.